If your sternoclavicular joint is elevated, we would want to do an inferior glide, placing the hands on the superior aspect of the clavicle and providing a grade one distraction, then going into a grade two and then into a grade three glide with our intent to stretch, holding for eight to 10 seconds, coming back to a grade two and repeating this technique another two to three times. Thoracic outlet syndrome. We're going to mobilize the sternoclavicular joint and depending on your findings, you may find that the sternoclavicular joint is elevated or it may be depressed. If it is elevated, you are going to mobilize in a superior direction to increase depression. You're going to come just inferior at the medial aspect, placing your thumbs together and creating a superior medial direction. We're going to go into a grade one sustained, then a grade two, and a grade three sustained, holding for eight to 10 seconds, with our intent being to stretch. Coming back to grade two, applying a grade three, holding for eight to 10 seconds, releasing back to grade two and repeating for a third time. If the clavicle in this condition or this situation is depressed, then we want to do a inferior glide in order to increase elevation. Being careful of your hand placement, you're going to come just on the superior aspect of the clavicle with the thumbs together, bending your fingers in and applying an inferior distraction into grade one, grade two, and then a grade three sustained. Holding eight to 10 seconds, coming back to grade two, into a grade three, holding eight to 10 seconds, and repeating again for a third time. Thoracic outlet syndrome. So depending on where you're going to have compression of the nerve is going to depend on which structures you're going to treat more specifically. You could have a compression of the nerves between the anterior and middle scalenes. And in the last video, we did a demonstration of releasing some trigger points. And with your neuromuscular techniques, you should be able to help to relax the compression there. We're going to focus today on compression being under pectoralis minor and how we would actually soften up this tissue as well as subclavius as it attaches onto the clavicle and the first rib. So in order to uh, facilitate our lengthening of pectoralis minor, I've warmed up the tissue and now I'm going to come in just medial onto the coracoid process. I'm gonna sink in until I feel a tissue resistance or there's pain elicited by my clients. I'm going to work within my client's pain tolerance and I'm going to just position myself on top of it, sink a little bit deeper and do some finger kneading right at the point of the coracoid process. Now, pectoralis minor attaches onto the ribs three, four, and five. So I wanna facilitate the length of that tissue so that we can eliminate the compression on the brachial plexus as it runs underneath pectoralis minor. So I'm going to isolate onto the coracoid process or just inferior to it. And I'm gonna have my client shrug up. And as my client shrugs up, I'm going to move distally onto those fibers. And I'm gonna have my client shrug back down. And from this point, shrug back up again as I continue to move down the fibers to ribs three, four, five and relax. And I'm going to have my client shrug back up again. As he's shrugging up, I am moving distally onto the fibers, facilitating a greater lengthening to the tissues.
To treat subclavius with thoracic outlet syndrome, you want to come onto the inferior aspect, rolling at a 45 degree angle superiorly as you move laterally along the tissue. At any time that your client indicates that there is an increase in numbness or tingling down the arm, proceed with a lighter pressure or skip the area that you felt the numbing and tingling so as not to put any undue pressure or additional compression onto the brachial plexus. And your pressure is moderate. Feeling the depth and the tissue as you move laterally. 